welcome to Android Dialogues where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Quinn Twet Dow and I'm speaking with... And I'm Ben Obertfeld. And we're currently in New York for Joy-Con New York. But Ben, where are you based and how did you get started in Android? So I work for American Express out of St. Louis and I actually worked in biotechnology for about the first 10 years of my career. Mm -hmm. So I worked on the Human Genome Project and some cancer research. And then back around 2010, I bought this crazy new thing called a Nexus One. <laughs> and uh, right around the same time, I signed up for this crazy thing called Google I.O. where I had like 90 <laughs> days waiting for it to sell out before I could decide whether or not oh actually gosh. go. Wow. It's a and, time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I went there and learned about this fun thing called Android, mm -hmm. making cool stuff that I can touch. And so I started doing some freelance projects here and there. Mm -hmm. And right around 2013, I left the world of biology and bioinformatics and wound up doing mobile full time. Mm -hmm. And I've been at Amex for about a year now yeah. working on the app that US card members use for managing their accounts and paying their bills and all that kind of good stuff. Well, I'm sure the biotech industry misses you, but us and Android are very happy to have you. So this week uh, at DroidCon, you're speaking about the fingerprint authentication API, right? Right. And so can you give us like a little like introduction to the fingerprint authentication API for Android sure. developers? Sure. So what the fingerprint API lets you do is actually date uh, the usage of uh, encryption keys with the fingerprint reader. The fingerprint reader. So you're not actually getting a high or low sign from the phone that the fingerprint was scanned, mm -hmm. but it's a way of actually unlocking an encryption key. And so what's kind of neat about this is that you can go ahead and uh, prove that you've scanned the fingerprint mm -hmm. by using a, a private key that's backed by the, the fingerprint reader. So it's kind of like I'm going ahead and, and notarize a request that mm -hmm. I sent to my back end. Mm -hmm. If I register the public key with my back end mm -hmm. and then I want to go ahead and make that fingerprint back request, mm -hmm. I can go and scan my fingerprint and sign it and prove that someone who you know was authorized to use the fingerprint reader actually put their finger on the phone. And, oh, and wow. did that. That's pretty amazing. It's actually just, it, it, it's so much more secure. It's actually an extra additional layer on top of the actual like pri public private key and signing and everything. That's right, yeah. So it's not like I'm just sending a blob of JSON in my back end. It's like <laughs> fingerprint scanned. Yeah. Yes. What's kind of handy about that is that, yeah, you know that if they were able to uh, use the private key mm -hmm. and sign something, you right. know, hey, we've, uh, we've successfully used the fingerprint. It's, it's easier from a user's perspective, interestingly, because you just put your finger in and then you've authenticated your Play Store uh, a purchase or whatever. But behind the scenes, there's a lot, it seems like there's a lot actually more secure, more security right. going on. It's really cool. Yeah, it's one thing that's kind of nice is you're able to go ahead and, you know, the, the documentation and one thing you'll find in my slides mm -hmm. uh, for Friday's talk is, you know, you can include a piece of data that you can validate to keep a replay attack from happening. Oh, cool. So, for instance, if I'm uh, placing an order with, uh, you know, a pizza delivery service, mm -hmm. maybe I'll put a timestamp or some, like, order ID or mm -hmm. something like that in my uh, piece of data I send out. Mm -hmm. So that if you were to go ahead and try and change that, uh, you know, you could validate this in your back end. Mm -hmm. If you change it, the signature won't validate anymore. Right. And then your back end can validate, hey, I've already seen this. So don't allow me to replay it. So in terms of like an Android developer, how how does it look from an Android developer's perspective using fingerprint authentication? Is it pretty straightforward or is it not so straightforward? So what you get is there's a class called the fingerprint manager, mm -hmm. and if you've uh, if you're targeting uh, OS older than Marshmallow, there's a fingerprint manager compat class, which will make your life significantly easier. Yeah, compat. <laughs> because you know if you look at the uh, Google samples for fingerprint, you'll find they're not using the compat lib. And if you start out using that, you'll get all the angry red squidlies from Android <laughs> Studio, and you'll wonder what's going on. Well, mm -hmm. use the compat, it'll uh, take away the headaches. So the fingerprint manager lets you go ahead and query the system to find out, hey, uh, do I have fingerprint hardware? Can I, can I use this at all? Mm -hmm. And then you can also query to find out, does the user have a fingerprint enrolled in the phone or not? Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and use those things to decide whether to tell the user, hey, uh, I don't see you have any fingerprints on your phone. Why don't you go add one? Mm -hmm. And we'll make this app a lot more uh, you know, fun for you mm -hmm. with the fingerprint. And so you have that. And then when you create your uh, key pair, there's a uh, parameter you can set that will set uh, authentication required. Mm -hmm. So that'll actually create the key in such a manner that's locked down by the fingerprint reader. Oh, okay. And yeah. so that's how you go ahead and create the key that's gated by the fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And 
when you go ahead and want to use the fingerprint, mm -hmm. you'll need to register the public key from that pair with your back end mm -hmm. so that you know and associate with the user so that when your user go ahead and sends a request mm -hmm. with the fingerprint scanner, uh, you're able to validate that mm -hmm. on you know on the back end. Mm -hmm. So if you already have like some kind of authentication flow in your application, is it is it I want to say trivial? Maybe is it trivial or not so trivial or very difficult to integrate like fingerprint authentication on top of that? So you know, uh, one thing I have is in, in my uh, slides that I'll have. Uh, I've got an example code for mm -hmm. how to you know like a, a really quick and dirty validation process, which is kind of handy. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you're going ahead and doing a, you know, maybe when I sign in to my app, I'm getting OAuth refresh and getting a token for the duration of using the phone app, mm -hmm. you'll just need to go ahead and change your uh, flow there to take a signed request. Mm -hmm. So that's not too, yeah. uh, too tough. Mm -hmm. And then again, like if I'm going to ahead and make a purchase and I want to gate that with the fingerprint, mm -hmm. we'll just go ahead and validate the signature. And so, you know, it's it's a little bit more legwork, but it's not. I don't think it's like a, uh, a, a grotesque undertaking. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it sounds like fairly accessible, like full for for developers to kind of add that add that functionality. But you know, if someone was interested in kind of like starting to integrate the fingerprint authentication into their app, do you have any like, I don't know, pain points that like bugged you, or any kind of like good tips that you can share, like? So for sure, definitely use the uh, Compat. It's not in the docs, uh, you know, that's accessible in the examples. So, you know, pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that's good to know, too, is if you're working cross-functionally with an iOS team, mm -hmm. they have the same uh, concept on their fingerprint reader. Uh, they call them secure enclave keys. Oh. So, uh, you know, that's the buzzword to drop with your iOS compatriots when you're laying out a, a, an authentication flow cool. is they can do the same thing with a private key that's backed by the fingerprint. Oh, nice. um, another great thing to take a look at is the material guidelines for, from Google have uh, a whole page on fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And so they want to make sure that all these uh, user experience is consistent across every app mm -hmm. because what's interesting is when you look at the uh, the fingerprint screen that you see in an app, mm -hmm. uh, that's not coming from the framework. That's You have to actually design a layout and a dialogue for that. Right, so right. They, you know, they have some red lines for you to follow as you're designing. And uh, you know, use the material icon and, and you mm -hmm. know, all that kind of advice. And then what's also really handy too is that in the interest of consistency, when you're capturing error messages mm -hmm. like uh, you know, the fingerprint uh, fingerprint reader was dirty, or you scanned your fingerprint too quickly, mm -hmm. or things like that. The framework actually gives you some uh, message blurbs to use in your UI. Cool. So, you know, a lot of the weird corner cases that might be involved in the fingerprint scanning process, they'll take care of for you, mm -hmm. and so you can provide messages to the user, which is really handy because, you know, there's so many different yeah. edge cases to consider. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, one thing to keep in mind when you're building out your flows is that if the user will add a new fingerprint to mm -hmm. the device, or if they turn off their lock screen, uh, it will invalidate all of the keys that are backed by the fingerprint reader. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is if I hand my phone to someone and they add their fingerprint, I don't want them to be able to order you know, 100 pizzas on my dime <laughs> without me knowing about it. Mm -hmm. So. As you're building, you know, you'll want to, when you go ahead and try and use one of these keys, it's been invalidated by the, uh, because of this, you know, the framework will throw you uh, an invalid key exception. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure you handle this and let the user punch in their password right. and then re-register their fingerprint again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, be nice. And as you're architecting, don't uh, make sure that you have a way of re-registering the uh, you know your keys mm -hmm. and don't paint you know yourself in a corner where you can't actually if you're designing your flows make sure that you can do this again the material guidelines have some hints on how to design the dialogues mm -hmm. and make it look uh, really pretty when your uh, your customer runs into this kind of problem awesome I, I think it's always interesting when I mean I when I think about fingerprint authentication I, I kind of think of it more as like a hardware API so like I feel like I tend to focus on that side but obviously there's a very like important user experience user kind of like user flow and like being able to handle situations like that very well and it's nice that like, like from what you're saying that you get a little help with that yeah and definitely they they really try to uh, 
message the user about how uh, where they can use fingerprints. So mm -hmm. when you go in and enroll on a fingerprint in the settings, mm -hmm. they give you you know a giant picture of the material fingerprint icon. And so as a developer, uh, they would like you to go ahead and use that too. And uh, so that everyone knows when you see this icon, you can use your fingerprint and mm -hmm. get through your app, your flows a lot faster. So thanks so much, Ben. Um, ben again is giving his talk at DroidCon New York and I do believe that all of the talks will be recorded. So if you are interested in getting fingerprint authentication into your app, you should definitely check out Ben's talk. If people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? So I'm on Twitter at uh, Ben Liked to Code. And I have a blog at benlights2code.de. Awesome. And you should definitely check it out. And thank you again so much, Ben. And thank you all. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you all next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.